Well, it's not a tube radio. It's not a tube amplifier. Uh, there are no tubes in this, in fact, but it's still vintage and it's still kind of cool. Um, this is a 19, early 1980s Korg Poly 6 analog synthesizer. I've had a few. Oh, I was probably about the fifth uh, analog synth that I've had on my bench in the last little bit, which is kind of funny because I don't normally repair those. So I try to only do what I am uh, feel comfortable with. And uh, that's worked out in the past. So the owner, who's a friend of a friend, says that the problem is that it uh, doesn't seem to have any power. So he thought the power supply was a problem. I checked it out and um, it looks like the 15 volt positive and negative rails are fine. The, 15, the 5 volt negative rail is fine. And it's the 5 volt positive rail that is no good. Um, so I'll show you what's involved with that. Let's take a look at a schematic here. Okay, so here is the power supply board. And here's the plus five rail. And you can see there's a variable resistor here to fine tune that voltage, uh, an op amp, half of a 4558 five, and uh, this resistor connected to this power transistor, uh, current sensing resistor here, and then another resist another transistor here. So this is a, a current limiting circuit. And what's happened is this is blown, this is blown, this is blown. So there's something that's shorting it. Uh, and we'll have to figure out what that is. Okay, so I replaced the uh, op amp and the power transistor and uh, disconnected everything, of course. And so the five volt rail came back to life. So we have the five volt rail. We know that something is causing that to um, short and it's not on the PSU board itself. So our first suspicion is this board right here. Now, this is infamous. <laughs> um, Korg put in a NICAD battery, rechargeable battery for the CMOS or for the RAM. And um, those are notorious for leaking. Uh, this one did leak and someone repaired it by replacing it with a lithium battery and replacing the capacitor with the diode. Um, so it's no longer rechargeable, of course, and looked like they repaired a few traces. But I suspect that this is the board that is creating our short, and we can confirm that. Let's take a look at the connector pins, and I bet you anything. So here, there's actually two 5 volt rails in here. Let's take a look at this one. There's no short there, and then this one, which is shorted. Yep, yeah, so it's this board that has a short somewhere in it, and we will. <laughs> That's going to be fun. So that means we have to take this board out, see if we can track down that chart, which probably has something to do with these bad traces here that were eaten away by the original battery leak, and uh, see whether we might be able to repair that. Wish me luck. Okay, so here is the board, K67A. And um, you can see the work that's been done on it. This uh, battery, obviously they put in this lithium battery and uh, removed the capacitor, replaced the resistor with a diode here. So that's a pretty standard replacement strategy. And fix some traces up here and fix some traces down here. Well, and here is the problem. This wire, which is actually the negative leg of the battery, ran through the board 
And when I looked at the board, this someone had, for some reason, taken this wire and soldered it there, thinking it must have fallen off and they thought, oh, it fell off right there. So they re-soldered it there. Well, unfortunately, <laughs> there, even though it looks like it might be connected to the, this is the uh, ground bus, you know what, it might be connected to the ground bus. In fact, that is connected right here to the five volt rail. So they were grounding that leg directly to the five volt rail. In fact, it was supposed to be coming around here and you can see it just fits curling around the board and then soldered onto this solder pad here, which is the main um, ground connection to the rest of the synth. I went to put a battery like that on there. I would have put a uh, 3023 holder. But, so anyhow, we'll clean that up and uh, hopefully that solves our grounding problem. Boy, we did a lot of work on this. Well, hopefully that's the only problem we have. We'll find out. Well, we've got power uh, and uh, all the lights are coming on, but uh, no sound. So we'll have to figure out whether there's something fatal wrong or it's just a matter of um, reloading the memory and we'll see. Ho hopefully it's nothing too major, but we'll find out. Okay, so we ran the reset procedure, which involves temporarily attaching a uh, 56K um, resistor and then adjusting a variable uh, resistor. And we did that, and so we've got it functioning. To a certain extent, <clears throat> there's a couple of things that are still wrong. There are some keys that are not working which is totally to be expected because that's what happens with these particular boards and many of these 80 cents boards. So we'll have to see whether we can fix those contacts. And uh, what else is going wrong? Well, we've got an error message here. Not quite sure what that means. And we have a uh, program light stuck on. So that may, I'm gonna guess that that's a, just a bad transistor, but we'll take a look at that. And we are in so I have to do some more testing playing around with it and oh yeah we also had a dirty volume pop which I fixed already an easy fix so my guess is uh, we'll load the factory presets and uh, we'll probably have to take this bit off, keyboard bit off, and see what we can do about those contacts. And I'll take a look at the schematic for that uh, LED. Hopefully, it's probably, that's probably what it is. Anyhow, we'll, we'll find out. Okay, well, we're making some progress, that's good. Okay, so now we're tackling the keys. I have uh, most of them working great, except for one. And I'm gonna show you um, the trick I'm going to use. So this is not unlike your remote control where you have a rubber pad here uh, with carbon dots. These ones look copper right now. I'll explain why in a minute. That press down on these metal pads here. So what happens is you get grime on these pads and the carbon wears off of these. So clean these. There's various approaches to it, but it's typical to clean these pads here with uh, isopropyl al alcohol. And then one of the tricks that I'm going to use, which I learned from YouTuber Syntegrator, thank you Syntegrator, is I um, went to my local Canadian Tire and purchased this rear window defogger repair kit, which essentially contains uh, an acrylic conductive paint. So it's got little silver specks in it. Uh, small little bottle like this. And I'm just painting the uh, carbon dots uh, and they work great. Now, 
eventually they'll stop working. It, they will, you'll get some corrosion on them and so on. Um, oxidation, but for now, they certainly do the trick and it's not very expensive. So we'll see how that works. So next I tackled the um, stuck LEDs. And the first, it's the program key four and bank D. So the first thing I did was I swapped the buttons to see whether uh, the problem was with the button or with the position. And the problem didn't follow the button. So the problem is with the position. So my first thought was that it was the uh, latching ICs um, because I've seen that problem before where they just basically get stuck on. And um, however, those two keys, four and D, um, are the logic for those are hand, is handled by two different ICs, IC4 and IC2. So it would be unusual to have the same failure in two different ICs. I'm not saying it couldn't happen, but it would be fairly unusual. So I took a look at the schematic and this is what we have. And you'll notice that four is here, D is here. So they are in a line and they have in common P13. However, so does um, button eight for program eight, and that button isn't affected. So what's going on? What else do they have in common? And as I sort of studied the schematic, I realized that they both have this data line, D03, which is going to pin seven of IC4, and is one of the inputs for that, for the fourth output, which is handling button four, and it also goes down here to input four of IC2, which again is handling the output for D. So that's what these two buttons have in common that button eight doesn't have in common. So that makes me think that that's the problem, D03. So we'll trace that back and we'll see whether we can find out exactly where that might originate. Sometimes it turns out every, that everything is connected. So <laughs> here's uh, here maybe what ha was happening with that uh, D03 line. So there's the CPU on the um, KLM367 board. And that's controlling the logic. This is a resistor array. And these two chips are sort of like buffer chips for that logic. And you'll notice here, of course, this is the area that was repaired where the battery was. So all of these have been, we can see here. I don't know why he didn't cut these wires to length, but anyhow, all these wires are replacing those bad um, traces. But looks like he may not have cleaned off cleaned off the uh, alkali perfectly because uh, we have some more bad traces. And that's right here from this uh, r r resistor array and then from IC31 on those buffers to there. So we're going to have to repair those traces and that should uh, reconnect that uh, data line. And who knows? because this is also controlling the um, address to the RAM, maybe that'll solve our preset problems as well. Maybe we'll luck out, you know? So here goes. Okay, gods of vintage electronics. Um, work for me now. So I'm not sure whether this is going, I'm gonna to have to reset after this or not, but let's see what happens. Ho ho! So that's a good sign. We do not have our stuck buttons. Yeah, I don't know what, have to see what the sound is like. That's, yay, yay. Well, it's certainly sounding better. I think we're going to have to. 
Gonna have to load the patches. Oh well. All right, so we'll load the patches and and then we'll take it from there. We'll see what else needs to be fixed. Certainly needs calibration. Well, I did track down a few other problems uh, with the Poly 6. There was another broken trace, very small one, uh, that was impacting on the DAC. And uh, I also replaced the comparator IC. So now it's reading the presets well. Sounds pretty good. You know, I'm happy with that. On to the next thing.